Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you my Turner Acryl Gouache. It's a Japanese gouache and it's um, acrylic gouache. So compared to regular gouache, when it dries, uh, you cannot re-wet it. It dries just like acrylic, but it's matte. But it's more opaque than acrylic for most of the colors. It's really just like regular gouache. It just cannot be re-wet when it's dry. I've been using both the Holbein and the Turner acrylic gouache. I'm not going to talk about the Holbein gouache today, uh, just the Turner one. And um, what I do is I have a big sketchbook where I like to put on the back of it my swatches. And this one is reserved to gouache mostly. I'm probably going to add some uh, poster colors and, um, and maybe some casing too. But I have the swatches of all my different brands so far. But since we're going to talk about Turner Acryl Gouache uh, today, we're just going to stay on this page. So many, many years ago, I bought a, uh, an introduction set. I think it's called like a school set or something that had tiny uh, tubes in it. And I used it a little bit, not very much. So as you can see, it has, I think it's there 11, what does it say? Yeah, 11 mils in it. So it's really not much, but it, but the good thing of this is that it has a lot of tools. It has some brushes, it has a ruler and a tool to, um, draw lines with it. It also came with sheets of paper palette. So it's it was a, a really good deal back then. I don't even know if they make this this little set anymore. There's a I guess um, a portable water container. I've never even used it. But anyway it was mostly to try th the gouache and um, I started using it more recently in the last few months and I really liked it. So I swatched them and they're really the um, typical introduction set of Japanese paint. Uh, it's really exactly the same colors. I mean, I've got other paints that are basically the same colors. That's what you get. But what I was playing with them, I found another set that looked very interesting. It's the Japanese colors and they're basically traditional Japanese colors. So it's a really nice set of 24 and these are 20 milliliters. So you have a lot more paint in those. I swatched them here. And if you followed my recent challenge, the 30 strokes in 30 days challenge for the second part of it, I used this acrylic gouache. And I found that to paint fruits and vegetables, um, this was a really nice selection because they're not as bright. They're more, uh, they feel more like natural colors. So I, I use these a lot for that challenge. I did use some of these as well, but I really like this set. Now, because I started, I, I use this set also a lot. I realized that I was going to run out of colors very fast. So I needed bigger tubes and um, I get another set because I knew I was going to have to replace them any eventually. And I get a pretty good deal on Amazon for this set. So I jumped on it before the price went up. So this is a, a set of 36 colors. And um, it will replace all of these when they're gone, except this one. This one is not in here, unfortunately. Unless it's this, I'm not sure. This is, this says permanent green middle. And this is, this says permanent green medium. Oh, actually, you know what? Never mind. I didn't write the name properly. It is permanent green middle as well so great all these will be replaced by the bigger tubes that's very nice so i'm gonna swatch all of these i think there's a couple of 
the colors that I have here that are here also, but all the others are new that I don't have yet. So I'm going to swatch them and then I'll make a little painting. Here they are, all 36 of them, and I really like this selection. There's a lot of bright colors, a lot of more subdued colors. One nice thing about the Ternal Acryl Gouache is that a lot of these colors are light fast, so that's pretty neat. And between this set and the Japanese set, I think I've got all I need, really. There's even two blacks. I'm not sure you can see the difference. The jet black is very very deep. It's almost like there's a black hole in my paper. This one is not as velvety. It's a little warmer. It's a lamp black and I'm sure I'll find a great use for both of them. For my painting I wanted to go all out so I took a larger canvas board this time. It's 8 by 8 inches and it's pretty big for me. <laughs> I found this adorable picture of a Basset Hound on Pixabay. I'm kind of a sucker for Basset Hounds. I think they're so cute. Just their big watery eyes looking at you. I think they're really adorable. So that was my subject for this painting. And I also wanted to practice what I learned during my 30 strokes in 30 days challenge. So I quickly put on my first layer of paint, just trying to establish the values, where my darker browns are and where my, my lighter, brighter yellows are. And then I worked on the eyes. The eyes to me are pretty much the most important part of this painting. So I used a small brush. I wanted them to be detailed. And once that was done, I added my second layer. I really tried to just add blocks of colors. I did not want to have this dog too detailed. That was not the point. So after the second layer, I decided to start working on the background just to give me an idea of what the dog would look like uh, with this kind of background, what would pop, what would be disappearing. I just wanted to see if it would work with the colors of the dog. I didn't want to add a different color. I used the mix that I used uh, for the, the whites of the eyes, which is a medium gray mix with pink. And I thought this background was pretty nice. So then I kept on working on the dog again. And um, I have to say that it was very hard for me to not get back to my old habits. I caught myself several times blending the colors, smoothing everything out, which was not the point of this exercise. My goal was not to make a photorealistic painting, but rather add brush strokes and blocks of colors to show where the lights and the darks are. So I really fought with myself, tried to get rid of my old habits, which are not bad habits. It's fine to paint with details, and I really enjoy doing that. But today I really wanted to force myself to be looser. And it took me a long time to finish this painting because of that. I ended up adding a lot of layers. Good thing that with this acrylic wash, once the layer is dry, you can add another one and another one and another one without moving the previous layer. So that was very helpful. In the end, I had to tell myself to let it go, to not be a perfectionist, and that it was it was good enough. It was uh, one of my first paintings, if you don't count my uh, exercises from my uh, previous challenge, that I did this way, and it's fun. I like it. I like this style very much, even if I struggle a lot to end up with this result. Towards the end, I added another layer for the background, and I decided to make it a little bit darker. And I think it looks better that way. I also didn't mix my paint perfectly well on purpose because I wanted some um, some streaks of paint that were different colors. There's not that many, but I'm learning. <laughs> uh, just to reflect the, the dog that doesn't have perfect strokes either. 
So I'm super happy with the result. I really like what I've accomplished. I'm also very proud that I didn't end up with a super detailed dog. I really want to practice and make more and more of those. So the bottom line is uh, if you like gouache and if you like acrylic, try acrylic gouache. I think you will like it very much. Um, this is really good paint. I really like this Turner acrylic gouache. Although um, sometimes when I was painting it was very hot so the paint was drying really fast but it made me realize that this style of painting is actually pretty good for that because you're not blending the colors together so it doesn't matter if your paint dries fast quite the contrary actually if you want to add a stroke of paint on top of the other one at least it won't blend so that's pretty neat so again i really like this paint and you will definitely see more of them in my future videos that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it made you curious about the acrylic gouache. If you have tried it before, let me know and tell me if you like it better than the regular gouache. I think I like both for different reasons. Thank you all for stopping by. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Have a wonderful day everyone. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye bye. Thank you.